What's going on guys? Welcome back to part two of the Reaper Camshaft Swap Series on my 2015 Dodge Challenger Hellcat. So in this one, we will be going step-by-step -step process of everything that needs to be taken off of the engine itself to be able to do the camshaft swap. As you can see, I already have the body pulled off of it just for a little bit easier access all the way around. In this video, we're also not going to be doing a head removal for the camshaft swap. So um, specifically on the 6.2, that is the way that we'll be doing it. Uh, if you want to see the process for removing the body, you can go check out part one for the body teardown. But this is the engine teardown of part two. So stay tuned and we're going to go through step by step and show you all how to tear down your engine to the point where you can now do your cam swap. So starting off, essentially we're going to be removing the valve covers, the front timing cover, and then kind of leaving everything else on. Obviously to get to all of this, you got to take off all the accessory drives and everything like that. Um, that's kind of where the step-by-step -step process will be. You don't necessarily have to take the blower off. You can. Um, there's just this one bolt that's kind of hidden underneath there. So uh, that's just kind of whatever preference it is. But the first step I always, always recommend to anyone is before you remove a belt, Take a photo of the orientation of the belt before you remove it. That way, if you need to go back and reference it, you have that photo for reference rather than trying to find one online or somewhere else. So it's always best to take before photos if you're not sure of certain things of how they go back together before you start removing things. That way you have a reference to go back to if you get stuck later. So I already went through, took all of my before photos so that I have references to go off of later if I so need them. So now what we're going to do, instead of pulling the valve covers, they're also called cylinder head covers. It don't matter to each their own. It's the same thing. So um, valve covers is what I'll be using, but in certain manuals, they could also be called cylinder head covers. So wanted to touch on that first. But those are the orange things that are over here on the sides. Yeah, left and right. But because of the fact that we have to take off the front timing cover as well as the two valve covers, I'm going to go ahead and start with all of the accessory drive stuff first. That way, a lot of this stuff has to be pulled off anyways before we can even get to the sides. And that way, it's the least exposure time for all the internals, if that's the best way to put it. So I'm going to begin by doing all this front stuff first, and then we'll move on to the sides and so on and go from there. All right, so we're going to start by taking this belt off. Like I had said, we already took photos, so we're going to go ahead and get this tensioner. Get your ratchet in there. Start by releasing it. Boop. Wet. Woo, nice and crunchy. Alright, so there's your first belt. Do 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 do. We've got our supercharger belt. Get our big old supercharger belt off. This is a 15 millimeter that I use here. Boop. So our belts are off, so now you just kind of go to town on taking a whole lot of things apart. All right, so we're going to go ahead and disconnect this um, power steering line right here. That way we can take off the pump, kind of get that out of the way. Then we have a little bit more access sight and everything. So take this one down and out of the way. And we have three mounting bolts, one, two, and three. And you can actually access them right in through these little holes right here. So that makes it kind of easy. That's a 13 millimeter, so we're going to line that up and hit it on out. You can take this whole thing out of the way. Don't forget to put your bolts in your labeled bag. That way you're not playing guessing games later. Now we can get to all of our other timing cover bolts and kind of have a better visual. And we had to get the power steering uh, reservoir out of the way anyway to be able to remove that valve cover so either way it had to come off it's just easier to take those three bolts off than rather trying to fight with it 
All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and work on our alternator right here. We're gonna disconnect the electrical one connections first. So you're gonna push out on the red locking tab and then disconnect it. So you wanna be kind of gentle when you're prying on these locking tabs. Here you go. Just kind of push in on it and then you can shimmy it out like that. And then you have a cover right there, that way you don't get sparks. And we're gonna go ahead and remove this line as well. All right, we're gonna go ahead and use a 13 millimeter right here. Okay. Disconnect there, and voila. Put your nut back on so you don't lose it. And now this is free. There are our three mounting bolts that we're gonna be taking out. We have a top one here, and then two bottom ones down here. This one right here has like a brace that goes over to the strut tower. So we're just gonna loosen up this one, take this out, and then we might loosen this one a little bit so that we have a little bit of play in it to be able to wiggle it around if we need to. The bolt heads are 15 millimeter, and this strut tower one over here is a 13 for the stud. Here, just enough to where it swings down and out of the way. So going back with the labeling principle, it's always good to label your wiring harnesses too or connectors of what you're disconnecting. That way you don't forget about them later on and you're sitting here guessing where things go. It's just always a good idea to label everything. So for instance, for the AC compressor right here, we have a top and a bottom one. So I have AC top and AC bottom listed here. They are color coordinated too. One's black, one's gray. And you can kind of guess also by how they're already like preformed from years of sitting here. But like I said, sometimes it's just easier and always to just have a double, double checking on all that. So that's just why I label everything. So also with the AC compressor is that it's not only connected to the timing cover, but you have a third bolt that's also on the block. So in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the AC compressor. That way it's sitting on the table out of the way and I can take this line that's connected right here with it and I don't have to disconnect it and then it gets that line out of the way as well. So you have this stud bolt at the top here, a bottom one right here, and then the third one is also sharing a clip line for these transmission lines over here by the block, kind of hidden back here. They are 13 millimeter bolts and they're pretty long. So here's that first one that shares with the transmission lines that are right here. Okay. So because the stud is a little bit too long to clear the transmission lines and the subframe, I'm gonna go ahead and take out the stud as well. It is an inverted torque, so an E7. So we're gonna crack this loose and just go ahead and take this off with the compressor itself. Voila, take the whole shebang off. Also, don't forget to disconnect your camshaft position sensor right here. Also, I had bought this car used and they had done other little upgrades on it. Um, they put this oil separator on here for uh, the crankcase pressure venting stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off, like dismount it here so we can disconnect our hoses here and down here. That way we can just remove that whole unit and have a lot more access to the electrical connectors that are behind it. These are quick connect things, so you're just gonna push in on this green tab and you're gonna kind of wiggle it up and out. Loosen it up. Pull that off. Now we can kind of get to it a little bit easier once this is tucked over here out of the way. And then this one, it has the same hose on it. You're just gonna push on the green tab and then pull it right off like that. Now we've also got all of our supercharger sensors. I already slid the red locking tab back and you can push down on the tab and then wiggle that one out. So showing y'all 
on this one, you can just kind of pull these tabs back, press in on the lacking tab, or the little black tab, and then pull out. And bada bing, bada boom. So this one, it does have a little gray tab, so you're just gonna push down on it. So yeah, this gray one slides back, and then it comes out a lot easier. Um, as you could tell from inside here, I was just able to boop it down a little bit so we could get it out. Kind of pry up a little bit on the gray in the front here so I can pull that back. And then from here I can just push down and pull out. So this will be our top one that's over here. Now we have a bottom one down here that has a red locking tab on it. For this bottom one that's down here, it's kind of hard to tell. There's like this little red tab down here. You're actually just gonna pull back on it so it kind of pulls out like you just kind of pinch it and then pull it out and then you can depress the top down and then that's how you can get it out so this little red tab it was slid in you're gonna pull out on this red tab and then you can push down on this black one to pop it out of the way where you push these two tabs in, now we can pick up and out on them like that. There you go. Pull that up and out. Okay. Got the little vent house off. We're getting closer. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take our little 10 millimeter out right here for our hold down. Oh no. Work it, baby, work it. Goodness me, oh my. All right, got it out. And then you have a second one on the back side back here. But once I get to those, I'm gonna take the supercharger off. That way we can get to the back there. So for better and simpler ease of access as well as visualization, I'm gonna go ahead and take the supercharger off. That way I can better show you guys how to get into all of the little alley stuff that's down underneath here hidden. So I'm gonna work on disconnecting all the wiring harnesses that attach to the supercharger on both sides and then showing y'all how to uh, remove it from the block. So that's what we're gonna begin now. Okay, so this one's kind of self-explanatory as far as all the ones that go into the fuel rail go because they can only, they only reach to one length anyways of it. Okay, now it's in the way. So I'm gonna go through and disconnect all of these connectors. Gotta pull back on the locking tab, press in on the black, and then disconnect. Don't break them, they're fragile. Okay, okay, all right. Okay. Pull the harness and kind of drape it over here. And we have one last one on the back here, which I'll change the camera angle four, but we're gonna do the same thing on all of the spark plug ones as well. There, all right. So you're gonna pull down on the little red locking tab, and then you're gonna actually push right here at the top. It's kind of hard to see, so like right here, and then wiggle it out. It's also a good trick to kind of push up on it so it relieves the tension, and then boom, down. It's Baby dog! Me more! It's not too hot in here. Man, I'm sweating. How's the fan on? Because we can't hear nothing otherwise. Oh. Alright, so we have all of our left side harnesses off and kind of tucked away. Now we're going to finish up with the last of the supercharger um, sensors that are on the back side here. Starting with up here, again you have the locking tab that you just kind of pry back a little bit to unlock it, press in on the clip, and then boop, pop that out here, pull that down. You got this one, same concept, pull back, push in, pull out. And you got this one over here. This one is similar to the, uh, the coolant temp on the front. You're gonna pull back on this red locking tab, and then you can pull it out like that. So that one's a lot easier to see than it was on the front one. And then you have this other one that's right here. There. Then you can pull that one out. And then that one is all out and we have all of our electrical connections disconnected from the supercharger here on the back side. Now we're going to move to this side which would be the passenger side or right side 
and pretty much do the same process as we just did on the driver's side. But I went ahead and popped all these out. That way it's easier to kind of get it up and out of the way. Last one, push out, push in, and go out. There's our upper harness. All right, so on this one down here, the orientation is like this. You have a locking tab that goes down. So when it was in there, this was pushed up. So what I did was I took a little screwdriver when this was in here, and I gently pushed that locking tab down. Once that tab was down, I was able to push in on that clip to pull it out. And then we have this bottom one. Pull out, push in and out. Kind of feed these up and through here. It's also easier if you kind of push up on this a little to relieve the pressure. Push in and then pull down. And boy. Last one. And then we have one last one here. Alrighty, so we got everything disconnected from the supercharger itself. Now we're ready to go ahead and take out the 10 mounting bolts that attach the supercharger to the cylinder head. So there is a certain sequence to take these out. That way you don't accidentally warp it or anything like that. So I'm going to show you guys right now how to do that. Starting with bolt number 10, which is right here. Boop. So it would be the front one on the passenger side. We're going to start there, and I'll show you as I go along the proper sequence to remove them. This is our first one that we're going to start with which is the front on the passenger side at number 10 um, because this is such a tight area I wasn't able to get my impact socket there and I'm going to first go through and crack all of these loose before I actually completely remove them that way I can get the tension off in order so starting with number 10 I'm going to use a shallow walled socket or a chrome socket and just break all these loose okay now we're going to move over here to number nine. Move over to eight. Back on the passenger side. Seven, which is on the back of the driver side. Six, right here. So it's the second one on the passenger side from the back. Five is going to be on the driver side. Second one in the front. Four, second from the front on the passenger side. I'm sure you can guess where number three is. Got our last two that are across from each other. Back to the passenger side for two. And our final one back on the driver's side, number one. Now we have them all cracked loose. We can tip them out the rest of the way with our impact in any order because the load is already loosened from all of them. Boom. Now everything is disconnected. We're gonna hook this thing up and out of the way and we're gonna Yeah, you want me to get in the back right here? Yeah. Just go straight up whenever you're ready. Uh -huh. I'm gonna get a little bit over here. One, two, three. Yeah. All right, so this is kind of what we're left with. This is basically your initial teardown before you actually get into the nitty gritty of the internals. So tomorrow we'll be working on actually taking the front timing cover off as well as both, both valve covers. And then at that point, it is now ready for the actual cam swap itself. So tomorrow, that's what I'll be working on. Um, this pretty much gets y'all enough to get in trouble with for now. And so check back and we will do the final part of part two.